well, well, you made it back. Speed Culture Studios, thank you very much for stopping in. I've been waiting a long time to make this video, so I'm very, very excited for it. But before we get started, do me one favor. Quickly, pause the video, go down to the comment section below, and let me know what your favorite car is. It's a big question, I know. It's, a, it's like asking a movie critic what their favorite movie is, but I'm very curious. We're all here probably because we're involved with the Infinity Nissan, you know, G, Q, or Z cars, one of the three, or all three. But I'm really curious to know what everyone's very favorite car is. Take a second, do it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get to the video. Thank you for doing that. I'll let you know towards the end-ish of the video what my favorite car is, at least for today. So for those of you that have been around for a while, thank you very much, by the way, uh, you'll know that I really enjoy ripping around the mountain roads and I have plans for next season to get into autocross with the old Q50. So we need to get the car handling right. So if you haven't guessed already, uh, which I'm sure you have by the title or the thumbnail, we're gonna get going on installing these Hotchkiss sway bars front and rear. I love, love the addition of sway bars to any kind of performance car. And, uh, you know, they always improve, they always improve the overall driving experience, uh, at least in my experience. Uh, but I've gotten a lot of excellent feedback in terms of how the Q50 responds to sway bars, uh, specifically the rear. So I'm pretty excited to get both front and rear done. Seems like a relatively easy installation, so we'll go through that whole process. But first, I want to get a couple of clips showing how the car handles currently. honestly really not too bad I'm surprised well I'm not surprised I've been driving on it for a while but I was surprised uh, with these Tane Aztec Springs um, how much it eliminated body roll and the car really feels tight and nimble around the corners uh, so I'm really excited um, to get the sway bars installed because I can only imagine how much better it's going to be And we're lowered about an inch and a quarter um, so the center of gravity is nice and low with this car um, we have some nice wide tires on the front and rear as well so we shouldn't be surprised that it handles actually pretty well especially at the 20 to 30 mile an hour range um, unfortunately there's not really any space um, available around to where I can you know run uh, kind of a slalom or even a figure eight at higher speeds um, it's just really not possible. So we're kind of limited to the 20 or 30 mile an hour tests. expect a pretty nice uh, improvement once we get these installed so let's uh, I guess let's go for that I get took tomorrow off so I'm, I'm, I'm all set to go um, we'll start bright and early in the morning so I guess when this video picks up that's uh, where we'll be good morning everybody here we are today is the day so I wanted to drive around a little bit this morning and really pay attention to uh, the roll and try to take 
uh, some corners a little more spiritedly and just kind of uh, really get a feel for how the car handles before the sway bar installation. I was watching back on some of those videos that I took uh, yesterday. They just weren't all that great. It's really more challenging than I expected to get some good footage of the car like this. And maybe it's because the car is lowered and I was just expecting to see more dramatic roll. Um, Cause it really doesn't look that bad on, on film. So hopefully you can tell in some of those clips, I'll include them all and in, in the ones that I took uh, this morning uh, in that open lot. Um, but another thing is difficult to find space where you can get up to like 30 miles an hour. Every Everything I was able to do is around 20 miles an hour. We're, we're able to pull close to, uh, maybe not a full G, but I think on this on this uh, performance meter in the dash, um, you know, I was definitely seeing some spikes. So, But that's really why I wanted to make sure I drove around this morning and really kind of got a good, good feel of it. Obviously, I've been driving the car for a while, but you just kind of get used to certain things as you drive. So... Um, making sure I uh, was really focusing on how the car felt you know in the corners and whatnot uh, I think it's gonna be important but anyway let's get to the garage and get this thing going I'm, I'm pumped all right we got the car in the air front wheels are blocked um, we got everything laid out we're gonna start with the rears I'm not gonna do this as a, a how-to or a tutorial I'm just too impatient right now I want to get it done Besides that, my wife's gonna come home for lunch and I don't think she knows I got these, so we're gonna get them installed before she <laughs> knows. Uh, drop these. Uh, we have the flex pipe down there, so if we uh, get the hangers off here and we get the hangers off here, it should drop a little bit. We'll get something to hold the, uh, hold the exhaust up a little and we should have access enough to at least slide these out, uh, the sway bar out. So we're gonna disconnect the end links here on both sides after we drop the exhaust and uh, boom that'll be it by the way i think my favorite car is probably something like a dodge dart or a chevy nova like a 68 nova something like that you know small car big engine loud rowdy solid torquey muscle that's that's kind of what i'm into right now look at the difference here i mean how narrow that is compared to this so obviously there's going to be a difference in stiffness which is fantastic of course adjustability uh, super easy to take out I actually didn't ha even have to drop the exhaust all the way I just took the uh, hangers out um, you know the rear hangers and you can slide the uh, you can slide it up and over and put it right in place pretty easily so uh, it's gonna be a really simple installation don't forget to grease your uh, you know bushings and um, put them on right here there's a little stop uh, and make sure it's oriented in the right direction obviously you just want to make sure it's oriented in the right direction of course all right uh we're gonna toss this in all right we got the sway bar in place and it fits up nice uh, we left these loose because we gotta put the end links in uh, it's nice that these have these little, uh, I can't remember what the hell they're called, zipper, zipper, whatever. Uh, so you can grease the bushings if you ever get any uh, squeaking uh, noises coming from there. If you grease it properly, it should last you quite a while, but you never know. Um, so it's nice to have uh, the ability just to stick a little grease gun on and get these things glued back up. Now we got to put the uh, end links in place. Hotchkiss, according to their directions, recommends putting it in the hole nearest the end of the bar because this is the softest setting. A lot of people run it in the middle. It's a nice, uh, comfortable ride. It still gives you some uh, nimble, you know, handling capabilities. But you know what? We're crazy. So we're just going to go right in the end, the stiffest um, setting, and we'll adjust from there. If we can kick the rear end out a little too easy, we'll uh, put it down a notch. It's easy enough to do, um, but send it as they say buttoned up you want to tighten these down to 40 foot pounds of torque so make sure you got a torque wrench handy uh, i guess you could estimate but better safe than sorry well, despite the fact that it's hot as balls out here uh, it's a pretty simple job especially uh, the rear we got the car buttoned up 
drop down and now we just gotta uh, take the blocks out from the front of the tires and we're gonna take a driver on the block just to see how it feels with the rear end done um, it'd be a shame to put the rear and the front in and then not really get an idea of what had more of an impact whether it was the rear or the front so from what I hear the rear sway bar has the biggest impact um, so we're going to test that out seriously if you're considering this job after just doing the rear i would say do it for sure super simple it literally took more time to take the plastic shields off and drop the exhaust than it did to actually install the the sway bar itself i'd say in total the whole job for the rear end anyway took less than an hour for sure um, if you weren't messing with cameras and you had your tools ready uh, it's very very simple i think all you need is like a, a 12 millimeter socket to get the plastic shields off uh, a 14 millimeter socket I believe to get the I think it's 14 yeah 14 uh, to get the sway bar end links off and the the, the bushing brackets off simple uh, you probably need an impact to get the uh, end links off but other than that really really easy uh, let's go drive this thing this is when you hope you got everything tightened down obviously hard to tell any difference going through the neighborhood but actually swerving a little bit you definitely can tell the, the rear end is tight right at about 20 30 miles an hour oh yeah i can tell a huge difference already holy cow holy i knew there'd be a little bit of improvement but i honestly didn't know what to expect this seriously this is crazy it's really hard to describe actually before uh of course there was a little bit of body roll still um because we're just on springs but it was minimal it was minimal we got a nice lowered center of gravity but when you do the slalom type maneuvers or you're swerving back and forth it's almost as if the rear end was trailing uh, almost like you can feel it follow you after you make that initial um, you know swerve or the the initial jerk of the steering wheel uh, but now it feels like the rear end is right under you uh, it's again hard to describe but it, it it's super super responsive uh, feels very nimble so I'm, I'm I'm pumped to get the front end done let's go for this all right same situation we got the jack stands and the floor jacks in place on both sides for extra support uh, and the e-brake on as well as uh, tire blocks uh, behind the rear wheels so hopefully this thing don't go anywhere while we're underneath uh, we got to take off this plastic shield first that is going to be hopefully the most difficult part because there's 497 little bolts anyway let's get to it because dang i think i might have lied to you it's a 10 millimeter bolt to get the uh plastic shields off 10 millimeter socket man get with it too soon but uh this the front should be even simpler than the rear because once you get the shield off everything is exposed uh, it's a good time to check for leaks as well there's the old can and oil filter looking fine uh, everything else looks decent under here so uh, this would have been a good time to put a front lip on which I had one the front is a little more substantial uh, so the sway bar end links are a 17 millimeter bolt you're gonna need it most likely an impact an air impact uh, tool unfortunately my damn compressor just decided to take a crap so uh, we're gonna try to break this sucker loose with a uh, breaker bar hold tight Then had to get a little vice grip. We were spinning on the backside. Got it. Significant, significant. I should have weighed them. Uh, really, really close to the same weight, um, but substantially thicker. The Hotchkiss sway bars are awesome. All right, there we go. Fronts installed and tightened up. At the end links make sure you install these we'll clean up that little bit of extra grease but make sure you install these um, brackets so the zerk fittings uh, face the outside just for easy access for regreasing all right let's get this plastic tray back on put the car down see what happens all right all done was it front and back easily done in less than two hours simple job worth it um, before i put the car down I'm gonna actually mess around with the test pipes a little bit. I'm not gonna change them out. I just don't feel like it. It's hot as balls, like I said, so I'm not gonna swap them out. I wanna go back to these resonated ones. Um, just because the 
I'm just tired of the drone. It's not terrible, but like I said, the range of drone now is a little more significant with just the straight test pipe. So I'm going to put these suckers back in. But these don't have the brackets, um, you know, the U bracket underneath the car um, that the stock cats have the little the tab that you can bolt to it and it's kind of rubber mounted so uh, it reduces vibration because of the flex pipe well now that I have the flex pipe back in but I don't have those brackets on the regular test pipes either uh, there's some extra vibration especially when the AC is on and I don't like it so I fabbed up some uh, little brackets um, that I had on for a while and then I took them off when I changed test pipes but I'm gonna put them back on they're just simple just kind of bent some bracket and you know these aren't very substantial but it's enough to hold the test pipes in place and when that firms that up a little bit the flex pipe is going to flex a little less because i think i told you before um, the rear of the um, exhaust by the time it gets back there the uh, vibration the wiggle is not significant but it's it's there enough to where it vibrates a little bit so I'm going to uh, put these brackets on. Long story short, geez Louise. I'm not going to show it, but when we pick it up, we'll be back in the car and we're going to drive the sucker. Just to give you an idea here, this is what I'm talking about. A little rigged up bracket. Uh, put some fiberglass pipe wrap there, a couple layers just to protect it from, you know, uh, metal on metal would be no good. Um, there we go, both sides. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what it does. Uh, but I'm going to lower this car. We're going to check out these uh, sway bars and um, we'll pick back up, talk about it. Well, first impression right away, just at idle, I can tell from uh, having the, uh, the test pipes bracketed to back to that U bracket. Uh, vibration seems to be minimized um, just at idle. And when I rev a little, oh, it sounds good but uh, it actually twists the chassis a little bit more because obviously the engine flexes, so the test pipes move with the engine. Uh, and then since they're bolted to that bracket, it kind of grabs that, that bracket. So I can definitely feel that everything is secured again, uh, like it used to be from the factory. So uh, let's get out on the road, test these sway bars. Third gear, 30 miles an hour. So I'm just kind of cruising some back roads here, trying to get some curvy stuff. There's not a lot of uh, curves and twisties uh, around. We got into the country a little bit here. Do a little bit of swerving, trying not to draw too much attention to my erratic driving, but uh, you know, 40, 45, 50 mile an hour doing some back and forth. Uh, I can definitely tell a difference. I'm, I'm really, really, really pumped about this. I'm really happy to say that I believe all of the vibration from the exhaust being loose is gone. So those little 97 cent brackets and a couple of small bolts and washers made a huge difference. Uh, but these front and rear Hotchkiss sway bars, really happy. I uh, feel like I'm in total control, not doing anything crazy like I said, but uh, I just, I can't wait to get to the mountains with these things huge huge difference over stock as you can imagine you saw the difference in the sway bars themselves a lot stiffer a lot more robust uh, the adjustability in the rear uh, really allows the car to feel planted very very nimble uh, it keeps those tires flat on the ground so lowered with wider tires front and back and the sway bars we have really really increased the um, traction basically the, the the surface area that touches the road as we enter corners uh, and it makes a huge huge difference especially in a car that weighs 46 4800 pounds uh, this is this is awesome yeah, it feels feels great it feels like I have all the grip I want in the front tires uh, there was a lot of understeer before especially entering corners hard in the mountains um, especially going downhill um, you could really feel the nose kind of dive in and want to plow through the curve um, again we're not pushing the car like crazy right now on these roads but um, I can definitely feel 
um, that the front end wants to go where I'm pointing it. So that's an awesome improvement in itself. And like I said earlier, the rear end felt like it was following. If, if that makes any sense, you, you know, you'd initiate the curve and the rear end felt like it was coming around with the steering wheel. Right now, it feels like it is just immediately reacting um, to any curve that I enter basically. But um, I can feel the, the car being super, super responsive. And uh, that's exactly what we were looking for with these Hotchkiss sway bars. Hotchkiss, nice work. So what I want to do now is end the video like we started it with some exterior shots um, to see if we can tell a difference in how the car is handling. Again, that's kind of hard to capture. Um, I was a little bit disappointed in those initial clips just because it, it really, it was hard to tell how the car was performing. What's important is, and we all know, um, what's important is that we can feel the difference in the car. We can tell, or I can tell, that the car is handling much better and it's grip in the corners is greatly improved and that's it so here's some exterior shots thank you guys very much for watching appreciate the support appreciate all your thumbs up and interaction in the comment section if you haven't already let me know what your favorite car is in the comment section below and uh, hit that subscribe button if you would appreciate it very very much thank you guys again for watching see you in the next video And of course, I forgot my tripod. Hopefully you guys get the idea with those uh, couple of clips, but definitely handling much better. Awesome. Listen to this thing, can you hear it? 70 mile an hour, six gear, about 2,400 RPM. It's perfect.